السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So alhamdulillah over the last few days the first few days of Ramadan we went through the illness of the heart Al-Ghadab which is anger and rage and then we went through Karahiyatul Maut disliking death or detestment for death and now we move on to At-Tawadu' Al-Mal'oom blameworthy modesty now having modesty is part of Iman Al-Hayau Shu'batun Min Al-Iman even being humble is part of deen. As the Prophet ﷺ However, the key point in this hadith, so the hadith means that the one who is humble for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise him. The key message in this hadith is Lillah. So if you are if you have humbleness, you are humble, but for something else, for an ulterior motive for another reason, then this hadith does not apply to you. And sometimes that tawadu, that humility that you have for another reason, except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, can be mal'oom, can be blameworthy. And that's what we will be discussing today, inshaAllah. In general, modesty is something praised in Islam and is considered virtuous. The type of modesty that becomes blameworthy is that which prevents one from criticizing clear brutality or corruption. So when your modesty prevents you from standing up for haq, for the truth, right? standing up for the oppressed, the person who is oppressed, right? so when you see something wrong and you're unable to say anything or do anything right? or even think bad about it in your heart because of your tawadu, right? because of your humility, then this is going to be blameworthy. This form of modesty results in shyness and an unsuitable time, at an unsuitable time, when one instead needs to be direct and courageous, something blameworthy is wrong regardless of the status of the wrongdoer, whether he or she is a close relative or a person normally held in high regard. Apart from preventing a person from avoiding munkar, unwarranted or blameworthy modesty is also the failure to seek sacred knowledge. Subhanallah. So now some of the signs and symptoms. How do we know we have this shyness, this blameworthy shyness? Signs and symptoms. Failure through shyness. You fail through shyness to denounce what is undeniably blameworthy. Right? So you see something which is clearly wrong. Right? But because of shyness, you're afraid to approach the person or ask the person or tell the person or address the issue. You fail through hesitancy and awkwardness to ask about important matters from those who know. Right? This is another way. Right? So for example, you're going through an issue yourself where you don't know a certain mas'ala. Right? You don't know a certain issue. You don't know whether something breaks your wudu or breaks your salah or not. But you're shy to ask about it. Why be shy? Never be shy to seek knowledge, to ask knowledge, to ask something. Subhanallah. Supporting the oppressor. You support the oppressor by taking little or no action, either physically or verbally, to restrain or reprimand them. Especially when it's someone under you. So your own children, your own family, or if you're at a workplace and people under you, people who see you as a mentor. Now when you see them doing wrong, to remain silent, to let them oppress and continue with their oppression, is you helping them in their oppression. The Prophet ﷺ said, When people see an oppressor but do not prevent him from doing evil, it is likely that Allah will punish them all. This is a hadith in the Sunan of Abu Dawood. Okay, so what are the practical treatments and how can we get rid of this blameworthy modesty? For, to be for, for right and courageous, in condemning evil and seeking knowledge. Right? So we seek knowledge, seek what is truth, right? and then when we see something right, that is against Islam, against uh, justice, right, then we address those issues. Right? And we do it with hikmah, with wisdom. Right? When you identify an evil, at the very least you denounce it in your heart. Indeed, you know that this action, whilst obligatory, is the weakest demonstration of faith. Yeah. Sahih hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Man ra'a minkum munkaran fal yughayirhu biyadih, fa illam yistati' fa bi lisanih, fa illam yistati' fa bi fa bi qalbih, wa dhalika adha'fu al-iman. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, the one who sees from amongst you sees an evil, he should stop it with his hand. If he's unable to do so, then with his tongue. If he's unable to do so, then he should think of it bad in his heart. And this is the weakest form of iman. So this is the weak, this is the least that we can do, is to think of something that is wrong as wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that when people are talking about uh, 
ridiculing the Quran, right, then we should leave their company. Right? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, and when you come across those who ridicule our revelations, do not sit with them unless they engage in different topic. Should shaitan make you forget, then once you remember, do not continue to sit with the wrongdoing people. Right? Subhanallah. So that's something else we can do, is to leave. Right? When we're in an environment, we're in a place where there's evil happening, Right, then instead of sitting there continuing with the evil, right, so let's say there's a majlis, right, there's a there's a gathering of people who started to backbite, then if we can stop it, we should stop it. Right? But the we the least thing we can do is to leave that leave that room, right, leave that conversation until they start talking about something else. Subhanallah. Uh, if we look at exceptions, then ill time or ill con- conceived modesty is always blameworthy. Right? So there is no there is no uh, exception. Right? However. There are certain matters right, where there is a genuine ikhtilaf right, or difference of opinion. Right? There are the various hadith. Someone is following a different hadith. Right? Then you shouldn't. You should restrain. Right? You shouldn't want everyone just to follow your, you know, the hadith that you follow, the scholars that you follow. Maybe there's various fatawa, genuine difference amongst the ulama. Right? Then we let the ikhtilaf happen. Let the person follow right, whichever scholar he is following. Right? And continue to follow who you are following, inshallah. This is not a place where you need to correct him and make everyone on your manhaj or you know on your methodology. Right? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to refrain, to stay away from blameworthy modesty, at tawadu al mal'um, and and be humble, but for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have haya, have modesty, but for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and always stand up for the truth and help as the uh, one hadith I missed out the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said unsur akhafa zaliman aw madhlum aw madhluma that fa- f- help your brother whether he is the zalim the oppressor or the one who is oppressed so the prophet the sahaba they said we understand how to oppress the madhlum right the, uh, the one who is oppressed but how do we help the oppressor right? by stopping him right by helping him stopping his oppression right? subhanallah Right, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability Inshallah tomorrow we will continue with the next one Which is At-Tafakhur, Al-Kibr, wa takabbur right, Which is boasting, arrogance and pride May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure our hearts from these easy diseases And give us the ability to gain closeness to Him Ameen wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillah Rabbil alameen Jazakumullah khair ahsan jazakum